Somebody call Phoenix Wright, because we're heading to court. Objection! Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times people sued video game companies. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we'll be looking at all those times people felt so ripped off, misled, or even addicted that they sued some of the biggest developers and publishers in the industry. Number 10, the Olsen Twins versus Acclaim. This one's pretty unique. These celebrity twins sued Acclaim Entertainment for over $177,000 in royalties and interest, plus an added $300,000 for canceling their game, Mary-Kate and Ashley, in action, based on their animated TV show of the same name. Fighting clowns, I'm sure we can deal with this. A breeze. The game was to be released for the PlayStation 2, Game Boy Advance, GameCube, and PC in 2003. Their lawyer claimed that the publisher had ruined the Twins' video game brand by not releasing that game. The pair had been featured in nine video games up until that point, and they generally received mostly negative reviews. So maybe a claim was actually doing them a favor. I can't believe I missed the game! Number 9. 64-Year-Old Woman vs. NCSoft probably tired from a day's worth of killing monsters, a 64-year-old Korean woman tried to enchant the ultra-rare Jin Muyang Huang's Conduct Sword in Lineage, but her failed attempt resulted in the sword's destruction. It turns out that that sword was technically worth $28,000 on the resale market, and that is a lot of money for a bunch of ones and zeros. She claimed that she tried to enchant the sword by accident and tried to get NCSoft to restore the item. They refused, and had the backing of the court because her logs seemed to prove that she continued enchanting items after the sword broke, and even bought a spell to help her enchant, so... oops. Number 8. Tattoo Artist vs. THQ it's all over. It with the right hand. Games these days are becoming hyper-realistic, and this is especially the case for many sports games. In fact, one in particular, UFC Undisputed 3, was so detailed in its depiction of fighter Carlos Condit and his lion tattoo specifically, that the artist of said tattoo felt that the game company had infringed upon his copyright of the artwork. Christopher Escobedo wanted $4.1 million in damages, but was awarded $22,500, which, by the way, was the same amount that Condit was paid for his likeness to appear in the game. That one dropped him! He's hurt! He's hurt! So, if you ever wonder why your favorite athlete's in-game tattoos do not match the ones they have in real life, this court case probably had something to do with it. Number 7. Smallwood vs. NCSoft The Lineage series and NCSoft make their second appearance on our list, this time for Lineage 2. <laughs> Apparently, NCSoft makes such good games that they should be illegal. Craig Smallwood filed a claim stating that Lineage 2 had caused him to suffer depression and serious and emotional distress, as he had logged over 20,000 hours in the game over three accounts between 2004 and 2009. In most cases where users sue software companies over these sorts of grievances, the companies are protected by their user agreements. But in this case, the judge still chose to move forward with the case. Number 6. Russian Man vs. Bethesda it's all over. Speaking of addictive video games, next up we have a Russian man who claimed that Bethesda's Fallout 4 ruined his life. Not because of bugs or a crappy dialogue system, but because it was so addictive. The man claimed that the game makers failed to warn him about how addictive it was, and that had he had known, he might not have even bought it. How you doing, buddy? As it happened, he went on a three-week gaming binge that cost him his marriage, friends, and job. The Russian man claims that those damages only added up to about $7,000, though. For a guy who apparently lost everything, he really wasn't asking that much in return. Let's go, pal. Number 5. Universal vs. Nintendo When two giant corporations go at it, there's only one thing that we lowly consumers can do. Sit back and watch. In this case, from way back in 1984, Universal, known as Universal City Studios at the time, alleged that Nintendo's character Donkey Kong was a trademark infringement on their character King Kong. A giant ape standing atop a building with a woman he's taken as captive? No, I, I don't see any similarity there. Nintendo argued that the character of King Kong was in the public domain, and eventually they won the case. Which you can probably guess since DK is still around.
Number 4. Douglas Lador vs Sony Killzone Shadowfall was supposed to be a major release for Sony's PlayStation 4, and the company hyped it up with claims of native 1080p gaming. However, after release, it became apparent that the developers used a technological shortcut to make the game appear to be in 1080p during multiplayer. One player, Douglas Lador, really didn't like that and filed a $5 million lawsuit as a result. The lawsuit was dismissed with prejudice, meaning that Lador was barred from bringing up the same lawsuit in the future. Anyway, this must be why video game publishers are always keeping their promises now though, right? Right? We must stand up to this barbarism. The world is watching. Number 3. John Beiswanger vs Ubisoft I will never talk. John Beiswanger is the author of a book titled Link, which takes its name from a technological system told within the story that allows people to travel to the past via the memories of their ancestors. If this sounds familiar, it's because Ubisoft uses a very similar premise and technological system for its Assassin's Creed series called The Animus. What if I told you that the human body not only housed an individual's memory, but the memories of his ancestors as well? Beiswanger claimed that this similarity was a direct copy of his work and filed a lawsuit. He would later drop the suit voluntarily with his lawyer claiming, the resources required to defend those rights are unavailable to many individual creators. None of you leave until the assassin is dead! Number 2. Jack Thompson vs Sony Tommy, my friend, you are not in liberty now. Here, we do things differently. In 2005, notorious attorney and douchebag Jack Thompson filed a suit against Sony after Alabama man Devin Moore shot and killed three police officers and escaped in their stolen cruiser. Thompson was able to convince the families of the victims that the crime was caused by Grand Theft Auto Vice City. Better not be screwing me, Tommy, because you know I'm not a man to be screwed with! Jackie Boy, by that point, had gained a reputation for crusading against violence in video games. The court, however, decided that he should be removed from the case for ethical reasons. Thompson would later have his license revoked and was then disbarred a few years later. Ha <laughs> ha! I'm gonna shut that big mouth of yours! Number 1. Lindsay Lohan vs Take-Two Interactive I mean, you can tell I'm so girl next door, right? It seems like a Grand Theft Auto game release isn't complete without at least one lawsuit. In 2004, Lindsay Lohan alleged that the makers of GTA V used her likeness and image in creating the character Lacey Jonas as well as the blonde girl in a red bikini that was featured prominently in the game's marketing. It was revealed later that the blonde girl in the red bikini was likened after a model named Shelby Willander, who was hired for the job, and this was proved with a photo of her invoice from Rockstar. The court later tossed Lohan's case out. My pleasure, oh famous one! Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day!